Happy Tuesday, April 23rd, everyone. Hunter here again at Weather on the Go, and in today's weather forecast, a cold front will bring colder temperatures and thus more frost and freeze conditions to the Great Lakes region by midweek. We're also monitoring a multi-day severe weather outbreak from Thursday the 25th through the weekend on Sunday the 28th. That does include all modes of severe weather, damaging winds, large to very large hail, and tornadoes and we're also going to look at the early May forecast later on in today's video as well. So thank you all for joining here on this Tuesday and if you are, make sure if you are subscribed to the channel that you do press the notification button for any live streams upcoming. If you are not new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe to the channel down below so you are updated on the weather forecast throughout the year. Also be sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It helps out more than you know. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at hweather 420 for additional weather updates that will be in the description with the video. Let's look at the weather forecast here for today. We have a cold front, a couple of them across the Midwest into the Great Lakes here and this these will be bringing some precipitation to the Ohio Valley, parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes today and as we go into tonight some of that precipitation will swing over there towards the Northeast and into the Mid-Atlantic not any really meaningful precipitation, but just bringing some cooler temperatures down from Canada with these uh, cold fronts. We'll show you that in just a moment. But looking here at the precipitation this morning, a little arcing band of some showers, some rumbles of thunder from Detroit down here through northern Indiana, north central Illinois, and then back here toward portions of the tri-state area of southeastern Iowa, northeastern Missouri, and western Illinois this morning. Looking at the severe weather risk uh, today, Day. We do have a threat for a couple of stronger storms from Michigan down into far northern Indiana, northeast Illinois, and southeast Wisconsin. Mainly hail and wind here. The tornado threat is exceptionally low. Looking down here into northwest Texas, we have a slight risk, a level 2 out of 5 for severe weather. That is mainly for large to very large hail where we could see hailstones in excess of 2 inches in diameter down here with the better instability today. But then as we go into the afternoon, notice we see that arcing band of some showers moving from Detroit down here through Indianapolis and perhaps down toward the Springfield St. Louis region there toward Illinois and Missouri this afternoon. This evening this starts to weaken as we start to stabilize the atmosphere and we start to see more widely scattered showers versus widespread showers as we go into this evening. Looking at rainfall amounts through your Wednesday morning commute, really not talking terribly heavy rainfall amounts, only about a quarter to a half an inch here at most across portions there of the Ohio River Valley that'll stretch back there into the central Illinois Valley as we go through Wednesday morning but this is going to be more of a front that brings colder temperatures this is the bigger deal that we're seeing so today there's all the colder air up into Canada Manitoba into Ontario with those below normal temperature anomalies watch as we go into Wednesday those below normal temperature anomalies start to swing down toward the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley and interior New England by Wednesday and then Thursday they stick around across those areas. So we're going to have a couple of periods of some frost and freeze conditions as we go through the midweek time frame. So here's Wednesday morning. You can see sub-freezing temperatures, especially for the state of Wisconsin into the UP of Michigan, northern lower Michigan here. We're going to be keeping an eye out for widespread freeze conditions across those regions. And then as we go into Thursday morning, more frost, more freezes across portions of the Great Lakes region, really centered across Michigan into the northern Ohio Valley near the lakes region. That's where we could see more of that widespread frost and freeze conditions going into the Thursday morning commute. Thereafter, as we get into Thursday, we're going to turn our attention back to the west, okay? So we have a ridge of high pressure starting to build in the middle of the country, but a trough starting to develop across the Four Corners region around the Phoenix region, stretching over there toward Albuquerque in New Mexico on Thursday. That trough will deepen and strengthen, but also eject at, towards the northeast into portions of the Great Plains by late week on Friday the 26th, and what this is going to do is 
lead to our next significant storm system. So let's look here on Thursday, lee side cyclogenesis. This is on the lee side of the Rockies, and this is a low pressure system here near the Denver region at already at a 994 millibar low on Thursday. And if you don't know, a low pressure system, the stronger it gets, the lower the number. So already at a 994 there on Thursday, it deepens to a 987. That's a lower number. So that means that the low pressure system will strengthen as we go into Friday. Cold front dry line set up for severe weather. We also have to watch the warm front up there near portions of the central plains as it advances northward on Friday. So let's look at the severe weather setup here for Thursday first. The Storm Prediction Center already has a decently large slight risk, level two out of five on the severe risk scale from southern Nebraska through Kansas into western Oklahoma and northwest Texas. This does include the eastern Texas panhandle here, and this could include some significant severe weather, more likely very large hail of two inches in diameter or larger, especially from Kansas down into western Oklahoma and the eastern Texas panhandle there on Thursday. So let's look more under the lens of the setup of severe weather. And you can see Thursday, Thursday night, the dry line is approaching El Marillo there into Texas, the Lubbock and Midland region, and perhaps as far north there as southwestern Kansas. Along and ahead of that, dew points out of the western Gulf of Mexico will be advecting northward into the 60s all the way up there into southern, even central Kansas as that warm front advances further to the north. And that is going to yield some moderate instability from Kansas down into western Oklahoma, Texas there as well. And we have a speed maximum on the base of our trough, okay? We have that mid-level jet starting to round the base of that trough into the central plains by Thursday evening and a decently strong low-level jet around 40, 45 knots here, especially for Kansas, Oklahoma, and parts of northwest Texas Thursday into Thursday night. So let's look at here at the general timing. This could change over the next couple of days, so keep that in mind. But looking here at Thursday morning, could be some ongoing elevated thunderstorms that could produce some larger hail here across Kansas into northeastern and central Oklahoma, stretching over into Arkansas Thursday morning as you're headed off to work or school. As we go into Thursday afternoon, we still have that across Kansas into Oklahoma, some of those elevated thunderstorms lifting northward with the warm front, but we're really keeping an eye on the dry line back here across western Kansas, the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle. That's where those supercell thunderstorms will develop. Very large hail producers, a couple isolated tornadoes will be possible, and some wind damage with wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour possible there Thursday afternoon. Those storms will start to peel off further to the east as we go into Kansas, Oklahoma, and northwest Texas with those supercell storms growing upscale into line segments. As that low-level jet starts to organize, we're going to see more of a wind damage threat versus a hail and a tornado threat as we go into Thursday night. Now going to Friday. Friday looks to be a more interesting day for severe weather. A larger slight risk stretching from Iowa here near the Des Moines region back toward eastern Nebraska near Omaha all the way over here into western Illinois, much of the state of Missouri, including the Ozarks. This does include Kansas City, eastern Kansas, down here into Oklahoma, including Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Norman, down into northwestern Arkansas, Fayetteville, down toward Fort Smith, Arkansas, and the Dallas-Fort Worth area there into north-central Texas on Friday. So a wide zone of severe weather. And look at the warm sector on Friday, the dew points into the 60s, all the way up there into Iowa and western Illinois, very deep warm sector. You can see the instability reservoir is definitely deep as well as we go into Friday already up to 2,000 joules per kilogram instability up there into Kansas City by Friday afternoon. Even stronger speed maximum or mid-level jet on Friday afternoon and Friday evening will organize these storms, especially with northward extent towards Missouri, Arkansas, and eastern Oklahoma, and a ferocious low-level jet maintained and consistent signal for this for the past few days on the Friday time frame with over 60 knots of a low level jet helping to rotate some of these storms on Friday. So let's look here 
again general timing this could change over the next couple of days but generally Friday morning ongoing thunderstorm activity from the Ozarks region in the mid Missouri Valley down here into the southern plains into Arkansas eastern Oklahoma and perhaps even the Dallas Fort Worth area Friday morning mainly large hail producers but cannot rule out all modes of severe weather including damaging winds and tornadoes then as we go into Friday afternoon it is prime time it is peak heating we have all of those parameters coming together with the thermodynamics and the kinematics we definitely could be seeing widespread supercell thunderstorms and intense ones at times from Iowa southward all the way through Texas here and each one of these could have the threat for large to very large hail tornadoes and some very strong damaging winds and then as we go into Friday night these storms push eastward toward the Midwest and Ohio Valley but the instability will drop off with eastward extent as we go into Friday night. Now, that's not it. We have the weekend ahead now. Another trough, a separate trough, will develop in the Four Corners region on Saturday. That will also eject in a similar fashion towards the Midwest and Great Plains as we go into Sunday. And already the Storm Prediction Center very confident on Saturday, April 27th in a level 2 out of 5. A slight risk from Missouri in the Ozarks region once more back down here into Kansas, Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas, and back into North Central Texas from Kansas City, back through Wichita here, Oklahoma City, Norman, over toward Tulsa, Fort Smith, and all the way down into Wichita Falls and Dallas, Fort Worth on Saturday. Going into Sunday, the stretches from around Madison, Wisconsin, and Chicago, all the way back down through St. Louis into the Jefferson City, Springfield, Missouri region, Little Rock, getting down toward Shreveport, Texarkana, and even again the Dallas, Fort Worth area as we go into Sunday. April 28th with that level 2 out of 5 that slight risk for severe weather our new low pressure system will develop a little bit further to the south as that troughs a little bit further to the south this weekend near Amarillo as a 995 millibar low it starts to deepen though as it pushes north and east but look at Saturday Look at the storm signal here from the Midwest down into the Southern Plains. We could have another widespread day of severe weather with all modes of severe weather on the table. Tornadoes, large to very large hail, and damaging winds. Going into Sunday, deepening low, 999 down here into portions of the, say, Ames, Iowa, into the Waterloo region, over here into central and northern Iowa on Sunday. Cold front will set up as this moves across the Midwest down into the lower Mississippi Valley. Severe weather from Wisconsin and the Chicago. Chicagoland area down there in Illinois all the way through portions of East Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. So a large area again from the Midwest into the lower Mississippi Valley on Sunday for severe weather. Multiple rounds of storms over the next several days will yield some healthy rainfall totals here across especially the Central Plains, but also the Mississippi Valley. Widespread totals in the orange here of at least an inch or more. Some areas here towards Oklahoma, Arkansas, and East Texas that see several rounds of storms each day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and onward, could be seeing an excess of three inches of rain, possibly up to a half a foot of rain as we go through that Wednesday, May 1st time frame. And that actually bodes well with our drought conditions because we still need work done on the drought across the Midwest down into the Central Plains and it looks like those areas are in line for some of the heavier rains as we go into that period through the rest of April. So that's definitely some great news to help to improve those drought conditions. Now let's preview early May just real quick here. I know we have an active weather pattern but this is also important. A ridge downstream in the eastern U.S. is still going to be maintained through the 8th of May and that does mean more trough will be coming in off the west coast and this is going to lead to more active weather. So let's look at our temperature anomalies for the first week of May through the 8th time frame. You can see above normal temperature anomalies out here across the plains and eastward through the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. Cooler anomalies out west. That signals more active weather as troughs come in off the west coast. They eject across the middle of the country and rightfully so. Here we go. Look at precipitation anomalies from the upper Midwest now all the way down through the plains states into the southern plains well above normal t precipitation anomalies through this time frame and look at all the rainfall here again very similar areas from the upper midwest the midwest down here into the plain states and the lower mississippi valley we will be keeping an eye on that and it looks like more severe weather will be in play too
do. May 1st through the 8th, very similar areas here. If you're outlined in the yellow, possible severe weather. In the orange, I have a little bit more higher confidence and likely severe weather from parts of the upper Midwest, perhaps as far north as the Twin Cities region this time, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Rochester, Minnesota, all the way down here again toward Fort Smith, toward the Springfield area there into Missouri, Kansas City, down here into Tulsa and Oklahoma City again as we go through the first week of May. Again, a very active weather pattern is just around the corner, folks. Make sure to have multiple ways to receive watches and warnings as severe weather will run rampant later on this week and this weekend. A NOAA Weather Radio is a great tool to have to wake you up for severe weather watches and warnings and tornado watches and warnings. So make sure you have your NOAA Weather Radio handy for you later this week and this weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all my old subscribers, all my new subscribers, everybody viewing this video. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below if you are new. Like the video as well if you like today's weather forecast, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday out there.